Alright, early in the school year, early in the school year, we solved systems of equations. Remember we had the equations that had three equations that had an X, Y, Z? Remember that? X, Y, Z equations, and we solved those by uh, using elimination and figuring out the X and the Y and the Z. What we're going to look at today is very similar to that, except, except it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be linear. Those X, Y, Z things, those, inter those were planes that intersected, and they intersected in a line. So what we're looking at today, we're going to be finding where like a parabola and a line intersect. It's going to be things that aren't all, all of them are not linear. So if we saw here, I'm going to do one of them by graphing to show you graphing, but then after that I'm going to do them all algebraically. If we saw uh, something that said y equals x squared minus 2x minus 1, and then we had y equals 2x minus 1. The directions say to solve the system. Okay, so what that actually means when you're told to solve the system, what kind of graph does this first equation make? It's a parabola. It's what we've been doing for a month now. Thank you, David. That's a parabola. What kind of graph does the second equation make? It's a line. So when we're solving this, we're finding out where does the line hit the parabola. That's what you're actually finding. Okay, so I'm going to do it on a graph here, and we'll look at it, and then we're going to learn how to do it algebraically, which is what I'll do from here on out. So on that parabola, that's in standard form. If I want to graph a parabola, I told you this stuff does not go away. This is a couple of tests ago. If I want to graph a parabola, what do I need to find about it? What's the vertex? Very good. And we had a formula to give us the axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. Remember that? So this is going to be negative. My b is negative 2. My a is 1, 2 times 1. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Negative by negative is a positive, right? So that means my axis of symmetry is going to go through x equals 1. Now I still need to find out the other part of that vertex. So I've got to take the 1 in and substitute it for those x's up there. This is old stuff. I'll be able to do this fairly easily. 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 1. I just plug the 1 in. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Minus 1 is negative 2. So the vertex is 1, negative 2. So I'm going to go over 1 and down 2. There's the vertex. Yep, plugged it in. They'll plug my 1 in up here for both of these x's. Alright, now I need to find another point on that parabola somewhere. So this is when you just get to pick any x and plug it in. Zero, zero would be the easiest one. Right now if I plug a zero in for the x, zero squared is zero. Negative two times zero is zero. So all that's left is negative one. So I'll go over zero and down one. Now remember this was the, the high tech stuff right here. That's one away from the axis of symmetry. So I go one away on the other side. All right? Everybody okay on your parabola there? Wait, how'd you get one negative two? I got my one from doing the negative b over two a. Yeah. And I plug a one in there. One squared is one. Negative two times one is negative two minus one. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Did I do that wrong? No, I was just okay. thinking, I, don't, I guess I missed you saying something. Yeah. I was confused at where okay. that even came from. Okay. Perfect one. That one is 0, negative 1. That one is 1, negative 2. And that one is 2, negative 1. Alright, so you've got your points there to draw your parabola. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm not going to use graphing very much is it's hard for me to bless you, hard for me to draw that here and keep it precise. 
I'm trying to find where it's going to intersect a line. I need it to be as precise as possible, and that's hard for me to do here. All right, so that took care of the parabola. Up under that, we've got an equation of a line. That line up under that is in slope-intercept form, isn't it? So it crosses the y-axis at negative 1. Oh, I already got a point there, so I kind of already know my answer, but we're going to keep going anyway. From that point, its slope is 2. So rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. The slope is 2. So from my y-intercept, I rose 2 and ran 1. You can keep doing that as many times as you want to. You can even go the other way if you want to. Make it down there. So you just have to find one place at the intersect? Yeah. Alright, so what we're looking at, I'm not ignoring you, I want to talk about that in a second. What we're looking at there, we've got that one obvious point of intersection. Right? Right there. What's the name of that point? From the origin, it went over zero and down one. So the solution there would be zero, negative one. Now, but it won't be like that every time. Okay. All right. Now the question that Macy asked was, well, is that going to intersect anywhere else? Possibly. Possibly not. Real sure. You know, I got my line about as straight as I can get it, so I can continue that on up there. I'm not real sure about where if this thing is going to keep getting wider away from that or if it's going to intersect there. So you are just going to be looking for that obvious stuff. Now, if we had a line, Macy, that came through here where you could see them both, then you go ahead and tell them both. All right. Now I'm going to show you that same system the way I'm going to do them from here on out. Because that can, sometimes that graphing does just turn into an estimate. If you're not careful and you don't have craft paper and your spaces aren't the same amount, you got fractions, sometimes that is just an estimate. So the same system, y <coughs> equals x squared minus 2x minus 1, and then y equals 2x minus 1. Alright, so I'm going to solve this one using what I call substitution. Okay, the reason it's going to be substitution is if I look at both of my equations, and these are the same two equations we just did, we're just doing it another way. I look at both of these. They're both already solved for y. y is this, right? That's what equals means. y is also this, right? So I should be able to take what y is and put it in for the y, right? Yeah, substitute that in. So I'm going to write 2x minus 1, because that's what y is, equals x squared minus 2x minus 1. Okay, now that all in one big junk up there made a quadratic. That's what we've been solving. That's what you've had assignments over the last two days. I probably need to get that in standard form, wouldn't you think? Okay, so I'm going to subtract 2x from itself and its buddy. This 1's being subtracted, so I'm going to add it to itself and its buddy. So that will give me x squared minus 4x equals 0. You can put a plus 0 there because your c is 0. You can put that if you wanted to. You put one plus two if it was a two, or minus so two if it was a negative two. two. No, that zero is not. This this is what standard form equals. This is where my c goes. Okay. 
Okay, now we've got to decide how we want to solve this. You want to do a quadratic formula? Yes. Okay, so you do need to know here your A is 1, your B is negative 4, and your C, we didn't have one, so it's 0. So we've got X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Good part in here, 4 times A times C, there's a 0 there. So that just becomes 0. So you've just got 16. And what's the square root of 16? So we got x equals 4 plus 4 and divided by 2. And x equals 4 minus 4 and divided by 2. Okay, so 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. We're not done. Those are X's. The answer we put was an ordered pair. Okay, so just slow down and we'll get there. Alright, remember we're finding where a parabola and a line intersect. So it's an ordered pair in X comma Y. All we found is two X's. So what do I need to do to find the Y's that go with those? Plug that in. So I'm going to go here to this linear... The parabola and the line intersect. I'm going to use this linear one. It's going to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to have y equals 2 times 4 minus 1. Plug the 4 in there first. So that's 8 minus 1, which is 7. So I've got the point 4, 7, which still wasn't one of my answers from earlier, but I'm not done yet. Now I've got the 0 to plug in. So y equals 2 times 0 minus 1, which is 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. So I've got 0, negative 1. So I just found two places where that line and parabola would intersect. Okay? One of those should look familiar to you. Can I rewind pages here for you for a second? 0, negative 1, right there. Four, I didn't on the y's, I got it on the x's. 4 minus 4 is 0. When I did the plus minus, 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. That's an x. Right here? I took the 4 that I got and plugged it in the x spot 2 times right here in this equation. So how will we know? Will it tell us if it's going to be? If it's squared, it's a parabola and it's not a line. Oh my gosh, I got it now. Wait, so you plug the four into the parabola. The I actually plugged it in. Now, I could have plugged it into the parabola when it got the same answer. The line one was just easier to work with is why I chose it. So whatever equation you choose to plug into, you have to plug on both answers? Yes, yes. And you're not always going to get two answers over here. You know, sometimes these end up being the same. Remember, we had a couple of them where you just got one answer. But so if I go, what I was showing you a second ago, we had the zero and negative one on our graph, right? We found that one by looking. But that other one, four, seven. Okay, let's see here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's telling me if I kept my line going, which my line's not going to hit that, I need to move it up some more still. It'd be about up there where my mouse is. If I kept that line going up there and kept extending my parabola, they would intersect again up there. Okay? And that's what Macy was asking about and we weren't sure on. So, And I told you when you do graphing, they get you an estimate. So it did get us pretty good, the one answer there. I'd have to have a bigger sheet of graph paper to keep extending that to see that other point up there. That's why I don't like graphing as much. The graphing? Yeah, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it as much. I like to graph, but I, I, when I have to graph to find an answer, I would rather find the answer algebraically or mathematically. I think that's why I don't like 
Always more than one equation. Okay. All right. Here I've got a system of equations: x squared plus x minus y equals negative one. And then I got x plus y equals 4. Alright, what we're going to do, we're just going to solve this system using substitution again. So if I'm going to be able to solve it using substitution, I have to get one of my very one of my equations, I have to solve it for a variable. Okay, that means to say I'm going to solve something for a variable means that I have an equation that just says y equals something or x equals something. Does this equation only have a y or an x on one side of the equal sign? No, it's got a bunch of stuff going on here. Does this one only have a y or an x? No, it's got them both. So I need to get one of these equations so that I can rewrite it so that it just says x equals or y equals. The second one will be the easiest. It'll have the least amount of work. So do you want to get it to say x equals or to say y equals? Now when you decide on that, think about what you're going to do after that. Okay, if we got y equals, it would say, if, and I'll let you decide, but if we solved it for y, if we had y equals, it'd be 4 minus x, right? Or you could reflip that, negative x plus 4, same thing. So I would be having to plug that in to the y. Wouldn't be bad. Wouldn't be bad. Look what would happen if I did it the other way. If I got an x equals, it would be 4 minus y. I got two places to plug that into, and one of them involves a power. More work would be involved in that route. Okay, that's what I'm wanting you to see and do the least amount of work that you can on. So I probably want to go with what Brooklyn said and use that one because there's only one place to plug that into. Does that make sense? Well, it would not be wrong either way, but if you did it this way, you're you're going to have more work to do. So I'm just trying to look, get you to look at that and see what's happening down the road. Alright, so we're going to solve it for y. So we're going to, this is the same as y equals 4 minus x. So we're going to take that and we're going to plug it in here for this y. Now what's could you turn the first equation like where it says y equals something? Like, do both of them so that you could set them equal to each other? Back to back, yeah, you could. Okay. Is that you could. And that's how that first problem that we worked was. You yeah. could do that. Um, when I'm plugging that in here for the y, that negative, that minus sign in front of it is going to cause some of you fit. So we got to be careful with that. So let's look at it as we go here. I'm going to rewrite the top one as it is, x squared plus x minus, and now instead of y, look how I'm going to write this. I'm putting what y is in there. Now, it was important to me to put that 4 minus x in the parentheses oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. because I'm supposed to subtract that whole piece. So if I left that parentheses off, it might look like I'm just subtracting the 4. i got to remember i got to subtract that negative x also. Okay, so if I clean this up now, i got x squared plus x minus 4. Then check this out. Minus negative x, which is the same as plus x. Yep, now I'm ready to combine like terms. That x squared does not have a like term. Powers have to be the same to be like terms, so I'm just going to bring that x squared down. But then I've got an x and an x, so that's 2x. I'm going to go ahead and do this right now, too. I'm going to add 1 
and add 1, so that's minus 3. Okay, we all right? We've got a quadratic to solve now. x squared plus 2x minus 3. Your options, completing the square. I don't want to, I could. I don't want to because it's got a bad C. Negative 3 is not a perfect square, so I'll have to go through the C process. Factoring. A times C is negative, remember this? A times C is negative 3. Are there any factors of negative 3 that add to 2? Pretty easy to factor that. That's what I'm fixing to do. Quadratic formula. Your A would be 1, your B would be 2, and your C would be negative 3. So you could do either one of those, factoring or quadratic formula. I'm going to factor reason. It's easy to factor number 1, and my A is 1. When that A is 2 or 3 or something else, and you got to do the grouping, then factoring is a little bit harder. But when it's a 1A, it's easy because it's just X and X. Remember that? We had a positive 3 and a negative 1. Solve both of those factors, you get negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, those are only, I set it up for you there, what we're looking for. Those are only half of our answers there. Those are the X's of those ordered pair. So we got to take those and plug them in somewhere to find your Y's. So look back at your equations and find a good spot to plug those in to find your Y's. Yeah, I'm with Kylie. Looky there. It's right back to there, buddy. Look at that one that we made a minute ago. That tells you what Y is. So Y is 4 minus X. So Y is 4. Oh, if I could write it, it would help. 4 minus negative 3, so y would be 7 with the negative 3, right? y is 4 minus 1, so y would be 3 with the 1. Good, good. That's it. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Are y'all just going to get two pairs on these? Oh, you can have, um, and that's, that's a thing. You can have, let me show you some different types of answers you can have. You can have a circle and a line that never intersect. So there could be no solution, right? You can have, if I just stick with my circle and my line here, you can have a circle and a line that has one solution. Isn't that tangent? Yes. You can have a circle and a line that has two solutions. If you're dealing with a line, and most of these are going to be a line intersecting, most all of these, let me see, other than a parabola, let me look at some parabola solutions. You can have a parabola and a parabola that have one solution. You can have a parabola and a parabola that have no solution. You can have a parabola and a parabola that has two solutions. So, I think that's going to be it. Two would be the maximum number of solutions you could have. I was going to, what I was talking about, where I was fixing to go, with a line, the line is not a line if it bends. So you can't say, well, it's going to bend back and go back through here. That would be something totally different. So you could have no solution, one solution, or two solutions on this stuff. And if you have a solution, I'll be able to here. Yes. So you always have to plug back in and get the other. I have a question. Yes. Okay. There's always no question, but how do you know... How do you know what order did the x and the y? X always comes first. No, no, I mean, I know that. I mean, like, how do you know where to put, 
It's what it's what we plugged it in to get. When we got the um, seven, I got that seven when it with the negative three. The negative three is what got me the seven. The one is what got me the three. So they go with the one that got you that. Okay, so if you have a up and down problem and a side of this problem, can you have Ooh. four points? Ooh. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Very good. Gracie on that. We're not going to have any of that in this unit, but you could. Good job. I forgot about that. Is that what you were going to say, Anna? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you were going to say. What did she say? No, I, I didn't say anything. Oh, I, I thought I heard. Going to okay. I just thought of the same thing as Gracie. <laughs> Y'all are on the same page over there. All right. Let's look at another way to solve some of these. got 2x squared plus 4x minus y equals negative 2 and then I've got x squared plus y equals 2. Alright, don't start doing this one yet because I'm going to show you another way and try to help you see when it's better to do this way and fix it and show you. Both, this, neither one of these is linear. Both of the first ones we worked I gave you something and then a linear one. Right? Neither one of these is linear because they're both squared. So this one is a parabola. This one uh, could be a circle, could be several different things, but neither one of them is linear. I could solve the second one real easy for y. I could have y equals 2 minus x squared and then plug that in. I could do that. I'm not going to. What I want you to see on this one is that these have a y that is the same. So I can eliminate those y's. That's what we're going to look at there. So I'm going to write the first one as it is. It's back there behind the keyboard. Oh, okay. Right yep, just get it from there. There you go. I'm going to write the first one as it is again. 2x squared plus 4x minus y equals negative 2. Now when I write the second one up under it, I'm going to match them up with like terms. So the x squared needs to go underneath the x squared. Here's the way Coach Wright writes it. This is not necessarily the only way. Since this one doesn't have anything to go underneath the X, I put a 0X in there. I have seen teachers just leave a big space there. You can do that. Just make sure you've got them matched up. Either leave a big space or put a 0 for that one. Okay, and then my Y needs to go underneath the Y. And then I've got my 2. All right, we did this first week of school right here. Look at those y's. Those have different signs. I've got a negative y and a positive y. Yeah. So that means I'm going to add. So i got to add everything through there. When you add, add and subtract with powers, they stay the same. Powers only change when you do multiplication and division. 2x squared plus 1x squared is just 3x squared. It stays squared. 4x plus 0x is 4x. Negative y plus y, be gone. Negative 2 plus 2, be gone too. Did you do that on all of them? Like even? So what's the one you did there? Just change them to where they have y equals and z equals? Is that the bottom yeah. a negative 2 or a positive 2? Positive. Positive. Mm -hmm. And then what's the one that you change it to? Negative 2 plus 2. So now, looking at that quadratic that I'm fixing to solve, 3x squared plus 4x, and my c is 0, it's not going to factor. So I am going to use the quadratic formula here. It would have an a of 3, a b of 4, and a c of 0. So we got x equals negative b, plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac. All over 2a, 2 times 3. Now again, since I had a 0 in the c spot, 4 times 3 times 0 is 0. So that's going. It's just a 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So I have to do negative 4 plus 4 and divide it by 6. And negative 4 minus 4 and divide it by 6. This one's easy. 0 divided by 6 is 0. So i got x equals 0. That one will be negative 8 divided by 6. 
which will be negative four thirds. Okay, then that reduces to negative four thirds. All right, you need to plug your zero in and plug your negative four thirds in and get a Y. That's your homework. I have a question. Finish both of those and get both of the Ys. Get the Y's. I gave you both of the X's. You gotta finish it. Get the Y's for your homework. Sixteen minus zero is zero. It's no Sixteen minus zero is sixteen. Fraction on one. Okay. Oh, I heard you.